We are now recording and we are now streaming live. Thanks for your patience. Great. I want to go ahead and call the meeting to order. I want to welcome everybody this evening to the March 8th meeting of the COCC Board of Directors. Um, the very first, actually the second item on the agenda is the Native Lands Acknowledgement. And the purpose of a land acknowledgement is really to, to acknowledge someone is to say that I see you, you are significant. And the purpose of a land acknowledgement is to recognize and pay respect to the original inhabitants of a specific region. It's an opportunity to express gratitude and appreciation to those whose territory on which we now reside. CUCC would like to acknowledge that the beautiful land our campuses reside on are the original homelands of the Wasco, the Wasco, and the Wanalama, the Warm Springs people. They ceded this land to the U.S. government in the Treaty of 1855. The Numu, the Paiute people, were forcibly moved to the Warm Springs Indian Reservation starting in 1879. It's also important to note that the Klamath Trail ran north through this region to the Great Salado Falls trading grounds, and the Klamath tribes now claim it as their own. Descendants of these original people are thriving members of our, com of our communities today. We acknowledge and thank the original stewards of the land. The next item is the President's Report, and this is a fun, festive time this evening, so I'll turn it over to Dr. Chester. Well, it, it really is, and um, it's one of my favorite times of the year when we get to honor faculty who have really excelled, and now they're receiving tenure and promotion or sabbatical or emeritus, and I am going to turn this over to our Vice President of Academic Affairs, Anne-Marie Hamlin, to share with you who who are the folks who are receiving these honors? Thank you. Well, it's here, deans, faculty members have joined us, family members and faculty members. Um, we're really pleased you're here to celebrate this uh, moment. It's it's important for faculty because they work really, really hard. And um, to recognize that work through promotion and tenure is a significant moment for many of us, most of us who have been here. So, I'm going to begin with the candidates for promotion, and I'll let you know by um, rank who they are. Just a tiny bit about them. You have more detail in your board packet, so you're welcome to follow along there. Um, so I'm going to begin with uh, the candidate who is moving from assistant professor one to assistant professor two. And this is Venus Nguyen, who you met last board meeting when she presented um, on her um, two program certificate programs that she had created. So she, of course, is in the art department, fine arts and communication. Um, she's developed those two new programs that you heard about last year, and she is the program director for graphic design and illustration. She is also, by the way, known as an exceptional advisor for her students as well. Moving from assistant professor to uh, assistant two to associate professor, we begin with Vaughn Briggs. Vaughn Briggs has been at COCC since 2016 in the business department. He uh, is recognized for excellence in his teaching and continual improvement to what is already very strong teaching. He volunteers expertise in the community as well, teaching for the Small Business Development Center, as well as serving on a neighbor impact advancement committee. Jacqueline Poe. Stepped into full-time teaching in 2016 after some uh, part-time roles here. She is in the math department and she is currently the chair of the math department. She is notable for um, a tremendous amount of service that she has done. She has chaired some major committees um, in our shared governance plan. And uh, she is also working on a statewide um, effort to look at co-requisite classes for math, which I'm sure you will hear about sometime in the future. Pat Canelli uh, is a, an instructor in geographic information systems. He is also the program director for that certificate program. He uh, recently secured a National Science Foundation grant that will help serve low-income students in Central Oregon who would like to go into GIS. Um, he also serves as the president of North American Cartographic Information Society. Susan Miller is a faculty member in nursing, and she is the lead faculty member for the second year of nursing students. She is um, also the program director and clinical coordinator for nursing. 
She is known for regularly organizing blood drives on campus and in the community, I believe, as well as participating in vaccination clinics throughout Central Oregon. Alan Nunes uh, is an instructor in the license and massage therapy area, and he is the program director of that program, in which he is the only full-time faculty member, by the way. Um, he is well loved by his students, as many of our faculty are, um, known as someone who really goes above and beyond to ensure their success and to make things um, available and accessible to them. Let's see. I also wanted to note that in his professional development plan, he works um, diligently to increase his knowledge and um, abilities in diversity, equity, and inclusion areas. He's received safe zone certification as well as some others for the offer. Amy Weary is also from the nursing department. She teaches nursing labs and um, serves as the nursing department's learning resources uh, center coordinator. She also does work in the community as well. She works with Airlink, the helicopter hospital transport service. Those were our candidates who moved to associate professor. We have a bumper crop of candidates moving to the full professor. Um, I'll begin with Dan Albergetti, who is a professor in the computer and information department. He is also well loved by his students. Um, he's got a variety of ways that he meets their needs in the classroom in terms of learning styles. He also is willing to accommodate their needs um, along the way. He is especially well known for his YouTube channel. You might want to look him up later because you could add to the millions of views that he already gets for his YouTube um, explanations of various computer things. I'm so pleased that Stephanie Andre is with us tonight. <laughs> she uh, is professor in the humanities as well as department chair of the humanities um, this year and for the next few. She has been an outstanding leader for CSCC. She also has served on and shared several major committees, uh, academic affairs, college affairs, and tenure among them. Uh, she also serves nationally um, in the area of her expertise as a reader for advanced placement, as uh, advanced placement exams, right? And as a proposal reviewer for a two-year college association of the National Council of Teachers of English. Congratulations. Also a uh, moving to full professor, Emma Shipwood teaches in biology. You heard from Emma earlier in the year when we had our meeting in Redmond. She talked about her sabbatical work. Uh, she is notably a pioneer in putting AP, um, online, her a and course, anatomy and physiology course online, including the labs. Um, and she has really been a leader for her department in that way. She has also been uh, and will continue to expand exploring coursework at uh, and additional vocational training at Deer Ridge Correctional Institution. Josh Evans joined COCC uh, in 2010 as professor of Spanish, assistant professor of Spanish. He has, through his time here, um, demonstrated wonderfully engaging, energizing, skillful teaching um, that students really respond beautifully to. He also has served on a breadth of committees, and he also serves as department chair for world languages and cultures. Sarah Henson. Uh, is a program coordinator for human development and teaches in that program. She also chaired the social science department for four years, which is prior to this year. She too has taken on a number of leadership roles in a variety of committees and task force task forces. Um, she is well known uh, on campus as a faculty leader. Three more in this category, I'll begin with John Licardo who's a faculty member in health and human performance. He teaches primarily exercise science classes, and he also directs the exercise physiology lab. He uh, too is really well praised for his well-organized and very professionally developed courses. Owen Murphy joined CSCC. I think we heard from Owen last year at a board meeting. Maybe it was here, yeah. recently at a board meeting. Uh, he teaches health and he teaches in health and human performance and his specific field is public health courses. He is also uh, a leader in sustainability on campus. He coordinates interdisciplinary work 
in sustainability and promotes the SUS prefix um, collection of courses as well. He also works in the community serving the various nonprofits. Matthew Novak uh, teaches psychology in the social sciences department. He's the primary instructor for developmental psychology courses. Uh, and he has quite, a, quite a, a professional life outside of teaching as well. He is the president of the American Society of Primatology. And he is a research affiliate with the Washington National Primate Research Center at the University of Washington. So would you join me in congratulating our candidates for <laughs> There's, there's actually a, a, an official vote. Yeah, I was going to say the action. Um, do we should we do this one at a time, or can we do we do all four together? We can do all four together. Okay, unless there's some disagreement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I would. Uh, somebody want to make a motion to? Uh, it's in, it's in the language is in the. Do we have to read the language? What? <laughs> Do we read the full language? I'll just read it. Yeah. Yeah. Be it resolved that the Board of Directors Central Oregon Community College promotes the faculty as recommended by the promotion committee. Second. Moved and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, uh, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed? Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, I just want to acknowledge people who are here and people who are probably watching. It really was fun for me to sort of see the, the breadth of all the names and all the accomplishments that have happened. And again, really recognizing, you know, the, the, the value in the many ways in which COCC is um, making itself responsive to this community. So I appreciate all, all your service and congratulations moving forward. And I just wanted to say uh, thank you. It makes me proud to know we have such quality um, faculty here. And uh, it's a great institution. So you make it that great institution. Thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank you for your service. So we move on to tenure candidates? Yes. All right. I just wanted to read you this statement about tenure that we um, post in our uh, manual. Tenure is awarded to those faculty members who have, during their probationary years, demonstrated the promise of the overall excellence in instruction or other primary assignments and commitment to the college and the community expected of COCC professional staff. Motion happens at various stages in one's career. Tenure happens once um, in that an institution. Um, and so I'm pleased that we have at least two of our candidates for tenure with us tonight. I'll begin with Sierra Buer, who is not here. Sierra, uh, Dr. Sierra Buer is uh, in the veterinary tech education program. She is our medical director for the vet tech program, and she um, serves in a number of uh, ways within the community, but you'll be interested now. She's the founder and president of the Lark Branch Rescue and Rehabilitation Center which is a nonprofit animal sanctuary. She also works with many other nonprofits um, in the area as well. Matthew Higgins uh, is a, a professor in human biology. He joined the college in 2018. He has been, um, from the very beginning, very active in service to the college in a variety of ways. He has also um, been, importantly, an advisor to the Student Science Club. He really loves working with students outside of the classroom as well in these sorts of ways. Um, and just a funny little note you might have seen in your uh, materials that he even assisted the culinary program in clearly <coughs> generating sourdough starters. <coughs> we love interdisciplinary work. <laughs> Leslie, Leslie Houston is with us tonight. Um, she's a former COCC student in our dental assisting program, and now she's an instructor in our dental assisting program. And so we're so proud to have grown our own. Um, she is well known for providing innovative learning opportunities to her students. We really appreciate her and the high quality feedback 
that she gives to her students, um, always making them feel welcomed as if they belong, which they very much do, and that they can succeed in her classes. She can be found um, when not in the classroom, creating opportunities for her students to connect with local dental community through volunteer opportunities. So she's, she's getting our students out there as well. Congratulations. Eileen Sather. <laughs> also brought family along and we're lucky we might hear them. Oh, I can hear them. Littles. Littles. Um, so she is in the humanities department and she was uh, assistant professor two of English. Um, she also is known for being a welcoming and inspiring teacher in her classes. Eileen comes with a degree in a master of fine arts in um, writing, uh, creative writing. Um, and she teaches both standard college writing, developmental literacy. In fact, she's the developmental literacy coordinator for the department as well as um, teaching creative writing classes. And um, along those lines, she's very involved in the community with writing projects, occasionally teaching writing workshops for the local community through the Deschutes Public Library. Kristen Lambert uh, is in the nursing program. She is in the second year nursing team. She is actually currently pursuing her PhD from the University of Northern Colorado. And uh, we know that the challenge of finding nurse educators um, is great in the state of Oregon. And Kristen is really um, boosting the level of her own knowledge and ability. And we are so happy that she's with us and that she's sticking with us. Um, her students cite a whole variety of study materials that she provides to them to cater to different learning styles. Uh, and when she's not in the classroom, she's often participating in shared governance or studying for something related to her PhD. Mm -hmm. David Schack is an associate professor of paramedicine. Uh, he teaches, of course, he is the program director for the paramedicine program. He's noted for his excellent work and dedication in strengthening the EMS program. He kind of brought it back. For us and has made sure that it is in full alignment with its accrediting body. He is also known as a passionate instructor who brings a lot of personal experience to the classroom. Lisa Shipman is um, in the aviation program. She had an exhaustive history of, um, of piloting work, professional work prior to coming to COCC, and some of it is named in your packet. I won't repeat all of that. Um, but I will note that she has blogged well over 10,000 hours of flight time. So clearly excellence in her professional field. She is also known as an excellent instructor who really works hard um, at getting her students to, to and pass um, the bar that they need to be to be excellent aviators. Carrie Walker, also from Humanities, like Eileen. Um, she is, uh, she teaches, hired actually as a world language, uh, world literature <coughs> instructor, but she also teaches a wide variety of classes in American literature as well as um, writing. She um, has also had some notable accomplishments in shared governance while she's here. She did chair the um, diversity committee, and she is also one of our faculty members who teaches regularly at Deer Ridge Correctional Institution. Another fun fact about her is that she's an aficionado of African film. And every year she volunteers for the Portland African Film Festival, which she usually lets us know about. So you can probably find them in the headlines. And finally, our last candidate for tenure is um, Hal Wershaw. He is in geology and the science department. Um, you probably are familiar with Hal. I don't know if we've got a presentation from him, but he appears frequently in our um, webpage. He is known by his students for his energy, his engagement, and his ability to connect on campus geological experiences in any weather, in all weather, indeed. He gets students out there, and he's known for organizing numerous field trips that are accessible both to the student who can attend in person and needs to uh, participate in field trip virtually. So he's um, pretty clever in that way. He has been making field experiences available to those who can't physically travel through this work. 
Those are our candidates for tenure. Congratulations to all. Congratulations. I would entertain a motion to approve. Uh, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of Central Oregon Community College grants tenure to Sierra Burr, Matthew Higgins, Leslie Houston. I, 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 I'm trying to say them all correctly, but I do great. Okay. <laughs> um, Mary Sather, Kristen Lambert, David Shop, Lisa Shipman, Carrie Walker, and Harold Warshaw. Yeah, okay. Is there a second? Second. Oh. It's three seconds. Okay, the triple. So uh, move this second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution passes. Congratulations to all. Next up, is, is there more? I can't recall if I was supposed to read to you about the sabbaticals. Actually, the board doesn't vote on sabbaticals, okay. um, but they do on emeritus. So I think this is a celebration. <laughs> I would like you to yeah, focus on both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have the um, PERT committee. committee chose four candidates. It is four candidates in your packet um, to receive sabbaticals of either one or two terms. Next year, Jenny Crookshank in Health and Human Performance. Rebecca Franklin in Forestry and Technology, Kathy Smith in Mathematics, and Ken Squirtout in Computer and Information Systems. They each submitted excellent proposals for work that they will do during their sabbatical time, and they will report back to us when, they are, when the sabbaticals are complete. In uh, Emeritus Professors, I probably should have pulled up my cheat notes on that. But emeritus um, is granted to those faculty who have had at least 15 years of service at the college in the faculty role, um, have performed um, with excellence and want to be recognized as they retire and they retain certain benefits um, as they retire. Access to the library, email, a variety of things. So we have three candidates who fit the criteria for an emeritus professor this year. Jim Moody, who's professor of biology. Julie Keener in mathematics, professor of mathematics. And Jane Morrow, professor of nursing. So congratulations to them on their retirements. And here is the nomination for them as emeritus professors. And you want us to do emeritus for each? Because um, they're also emeritus for administrative employees, or is that yeah, right? I would suggest doing one for faculty. Okay, I would entertain a motion. For Be it resolved that the Board of Directors in Oregon Community College District approves emeritus status for retiring faculty members, Jim Moody, Julie Keener, and Jane Morrow. Thank you, Alan. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second has uh, been made. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Votes. Resolution passes. Thank you. Congratulations to all of our faculty members who will now retire to the library where we're having a small party. And I'm going to invite the deans to um, come with us this time. So just a little bit of time. Thank Have you. Have fun. Well deserved. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you. It looks like next up is staff merits. Is that Laura? Yes. Laura. Okay, so we have um, two longtime employees of the college that are have been um, recommended for emeritus. Jim Wilcox. He started his career in 1998 here at CFCC, and over his time here in the college, he's um, helped a number of small businesses in Central Oregon, and um, during his years of service, 
Um, it says here he's in, it includes 347 new jobs created with businesses and has advised 849 documented clients. So he's had quite an impact here in uh, Central Oregon with our small business development program. And uh, Jim's stu uh, student feedback is always excellent. He has very high marks for all the great work that he does. And uh, he's been the Small Business uh, Management Program Counselor since 2001. So he's our first individual. And then Nancy Jumper, who um, started her career at COCC in 1997 as the director of the College Center. If anybody has a memory, you might have a memory that long. Um, in uh, 2003, Nancy accepted the role of a program coordinator and program manager in continuing education and has seen that program change over the, the number of years that it has been around. And Nancy has helped uh, many of our public sector clients with uh, leadership training and development. And she has worked with a number of um, teachers, trainers, professionals here in Central Oregon over her years at the college. And so she is also being recommended for uh, emeritus. Do you want me to do the classified one too at this point? Sure. Where was it? You got to love the screen that doesn't work. Did you want to do Stella? Or do you want me to? Improvise? No, you can go ahead. You want I mean, if you want. Stella Mackey is our classified employee. Go ahead. She's in the leashes area. Oh, um, we in this one. Uh, Stella Mackey has been at the college as in a variety of roles, but for the last 10 plus years as our senior enrollment and cashiering specialist. Um, I think that one thing that really summarizes Stella's time with us is when we created the Classified Employee of the Year Award, she was the first person nominated and was hands down across the college um, that she'd be the best best um, recipient of that and got a standing ovation at our end when we do those types of award celebrations. So she's just had an absolutely amazing um, impact on our students, looking for ways to always find them resources when they're uh, stuck. Um, and if anything, she's had an incredible influence, I would say predominantly on this building, um, since she's lived downstairs uh, in her day job uh, for many, many years, been the queen of let's have a potluck, let's have a party, let's have a celebration. Um, and really creating a place that makes it a good place to come to work and has really just served as a role model and mentor to many over the years. So absolutely fantastic employee um, and is really, I correct myself, she's been with college now um, just over 20 years. So she's been a tremendous part of the admissions team um, and impact on classified faculty and staff life. Thank you very much. I'm just curious, what, what are the benefits uh, bestowed on, uh, on the emeritus status? So, from emeritus status. So emeritus status, um, they essentially get to keep their email so that they can connect to different um, stuff at the college. They can stay connected to um, our Bobcat community and headlines and get information. They're also allowed to continue to return to events if they choose to. And then they also have access to some of the free software that comes with your, your COCC account. Um, I believe faculty, um, they actually have access to an office if they choose to, if they, need, they want to come and do that. And then um, and then they, what else do they get? They get some, oh, Mizama Gym access, I believe. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. I would, uh, I would entertain a, a joint motion um, for, both administrative employees and classified employees. And be it resolved that the board of directors of Central Oregon Community College District approves its emeritus status for retiring administrative employees, Jim Wilcox, Nancy Jennifer. And then should I should just read the second one. Yep. Be it resolved that the board of directors of Central Oregon Community College District District approves emeritus status for retiring classified employee, Stella Mackey. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion to move and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Congratulations. Meredith's status has been reported. That's it's worth it. That was a lot of perks. <laughs> 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 Moving along, are there any agenda changes that people have? 
Next item is public comment. Is there anyone in the room that would like to? Jen, is there anything online? Any comments online? There wasn't, a, but may I offer? Absolutely. Thank you. I just want to acknowledge that this week at CSCC is classified appreciation week, which is um, uh, a really fun and celebratory time where we get to acknowledge all of our classified employees and colleagues across the college. Um, to just honor the, the breadth and depth of the contributions that they make. So I just wanted to ask that we all acknowledge that tonight at the board meeting. Thank you. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate that. It's obviously very, very important to be recognized. Um, next item is the consent agenda. I would entertain a motion to approve it. It just consists of the minutes. Approval of the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Consent agenda has passed. Moving on to information items. You've got your financial statements uh, in your packet. Are there any questions for Kathleen? Good job. Keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next is the new hire reports. Uh, any questions for Laura? Bruce, I got a question. Yes. Um, so first, congratulations on finding um, an executive assistant. Laurie, I'm delighted. And second, this person is listed as executive assistant president's office and VP of finance and operations. And I thought that when, um, the the last executive assistant that we had full time, I thought also was um, to the board. Is that is that included in being the president's office? That is absolutely included. So this, this will be this will be our liaison. Office. This will be our liaison with travel stuff and scheduling with you and all that. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to confirm. Thank you. And I, I want to piggyback on Laura's question. So this is a person that sort of has split. Jeez. Yeah, okay. we um, we decided to give this a try. Okay. Um, when we had a, a vice president um, of administration before, right. Right. that person had a, a, an assistant full time. Right. Um, that person's been doing some other work for us that we need done and that she is very happy doing. It's a great match. Right. And um what we realized is that in a lot of ways, my the main work that happens in my office is a lot of calendaring and making appointments okay. and meetings and then board meetings. Mm -hmm. And so we felt that yeah. it was worth um, a try to combine the two, okay. um, believing there's, there's a full position there. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously, um, you know, to be uh, responsible with our resources. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, we'll reconsider that. Absolutely, okay. but I, I'm pretty sure it will. Great, thank you very much. Um, at this point, we are going to adjourn to the contract review board meeting. Mark, is there specific language I need to do for that or? Mm -hmm. No, okay. okay. There isn't. So we you are gonna take off one hat and put another hat on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so as uh, Charlotte here to talk about, Sort of the, the policy changes that are being proposed? She is. Sure. Um, so before you is a request to change the thresholds that we've dug, the dollar thresholds we have on our procurement purchases. In the um, background, it show, I, I kind of relate that. It had been mine on my mind that we were behind the times for a while. We hadn't looked at them since 2015. And then with COVID hit, kind of got put on the back burner and I'd like to bring it back up and ask for these to be changed um, to be more in line with what the other <laughs> colleges are doing. I surveyed them and then three drew my attention that we were really out of line. PCC, UC, um, um, University, or not University, um, Plaquemines County, Plaquemines and Chemeca were all within um, what I'm proposing um, and as well as that, I also talked to Josh Clawson because he's the one that is going to be doing a lot of this as well as Jeremy with construction and the bonds for the building maintenances and where Josh had worked at the Deschutes County. And my, my request is also within the line of what Deschutes County is currently doing. Um, I did want to note that 
if there's the you know current limits and the proposed limits rest assured if there's ever a contract over hundred thousand dollars we're still going to come to you for approval that is not changing we're just asking that given um the inflation and the ability to get stuff it would be easier for us to operate as a business if we could have the increase to the special any questions concerns This is um, this is an action item. Mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion. Be it resolved that the board of directors do hereby approve the proposed class procurement threshold changes to Central Oregon Community College rules of procurement. Thank you, Alan. Is there a second? Second. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, I, <laughs> I can't second. Can I? Sorry. Second. Second. Yes. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That has passed. Thank you. <coughs> Zach, tell us about the construction CMGSC. I'm going to actually defer to my uh, Redmond Campus Director and Capital Project Manager, Jeremy Green, who uh, led this process uh, with Charlotte also and uh, giving great counsel to Jeremy. Thanks, Zach. I'm actually wearing a Madras Campus. Um, Best, so we'll defer to the Majesty. I served a time in Redmond, but Amy Ward, Redmond. Did I say Redmond? Great, great yeah. hands with Amy. You know, I have the Redmond campus web page up right now to make sure I have my time right for tomorrow's 20th anniversary celebration. So, so you have a brain <laughs> What a great opportunity to uh, market the 20th anniversary of Redmond tomorrow. So, um, yeah, so Charlotte and I tonight are here to. Um, for the consideration um, for approval of CMGC for the Redmond or the <laughs> CMG, that, for the uh, Madras campus capital project that we have underway with the Madras expansion project. Um, in this process, we received three um, very reputable local CMGC applicants. We reviewed the applicants and um, simultaneously moved all three to interview. Uh, they were interviewed, and through the application process and interview process, the committee jointly, um, through consensus, um, desired to move forward with Kirby Nagel Health Construction. The selection team was apprised of Joe Prenowitz, who's on the call, Josh Clausen, Julie Downing, Mark Stoller of Opsis, who is our contracted architect for the Mathers Campus Expansion Project, and myself. And we were all led very well and um, utilize Charla as our head covering throughout the process. Uh, we came to the conclusion that Kirby um, was the best choice of the three, all things included, and would entertain the opportunity to offer um, them the contract for CMG service, CMGC services for the United States expansion. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions, Joe? Any comments, additional feedback you want to make? Uh, I appreciate that. Um, it was a we had three uh, really great uh, candidates for that uh, for this project, and uh, quite obviously uh, Kirby uh, won by a, a nose and a half. Uh, if you were in a horse race, so we're glad to uh, have them on, on board once we get the approval tonight. Thank you. If there aren't any other questions, I would entertain a motion to approve. Okay. Be it resolved that the board of directors do hereby authorize President Chesley or her designee to negotiate a contract for construction management, general contractor services for the Madras Campus Building Two with Kirby Nagel Health Construction Company. All second. Moving second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Opposed. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Very Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Bruce, can I just take a moment to thank Jeremy? This has been a huge process to get to this place. Charla, we couldn't do it without you. We're, we, as you know, we're taking a team approach this time around, um, and it really does take a team, and uh, it's been a heavy lift, but really excited to be moving forward now that having selected and negotiated the contract, of course, but we really want to thank Jeremy and Charla for uh, their efforts here and the whole review team that really looked carefully at each of these bids. It's an important decision. We're really uh, excited about this. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. At this point, we're going to adjourn back to the regular board meeting.
And we're moving on to new business. So Dr. Chesson, OCCA legislative priorities. Yes. Um, OCCA, I've, I've shared with you last month, has uh, three legislative priorities for this session. And um, they have asked that all of the boards of directors of the 17 community colleges uh, entertain a resolution to endorse those three priorities uh, so that they can use it as part of our legislative lobbying and show the, um, the widespread support for these. The first is to increase the, um, the uh, governor's recommended budget to uh, an increase, excuse me, for the CCSF of 20.1%. The second is to increase the governor's recommended budget amount for Oregon Opportunity Grants to 200 million. And then the third is to allow community colleges to offer Bachelor of Science in Nursing degrees. And so um, I am here asking uh, on OCCA's behalf if this board would entertain support for those priorities um, so that we can show solidarity and say Any questions? Laura, I'm curious, were there additional ones that didn't make the cut, given that you know, two of those are sort of budgetary as opposed to particular, you know, more specified detailed? No, measures? there are dozens of bills proposed that would have some impact on higher education in the state. And OCCA tracks those and uh, proposes to the OCCA board a position that we take. Um, but those, those are more us responding to what's been proposed. And so these are really the, the top proactive approaches okay. that we are um, driving. Okay, great. And, and it's the <clears throat> funding that's most important that they focus on the most. I get that. Yeah, totally understand. Any other questions or comments? Great. Thank you. In this case, I would entertain a motion to approve. Be it resolved that the Board of Directors of Central Oregon Community College support the Oregon Community College Association legislative priorities as noted. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. 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 We should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Next is the Community Health Worker Certificate. Well, it, it's me by default because um, Anne Marie is having a celebration with our faculty. But I do want to note that our fabulous faculty member, and she presented at the last board meeting, is here, Sarah Barrett, to make sure I don't screw this up. <laughs> uh, and so Anne Marie actually gave me specific language. Let's see how I do. Um, Last board meeting, you heard from Sarah Barron, who is our public health faculty member, about two new OHA approved trainings we offer in public health, peer support specialist and community health worker. You'll recall undoubtedly that Sarah noted that she was working on a one-year certificate um, that would be coming to the board for approval soon. Obviously, she meant soon because uh, <laughs> here it is. Um, this certificate incorporates the two courses that we've heard about um, as stackables within a certificate and supports continuing education and career development for the community health worker workforce. In addition, students who are interested in transfer, this certificate is a step along the way to the current Public Health Associate of Arts Oregon transfer degree. Um, and Oregon is anticipating job openings in its public health workforce will increase by about 18% over the next two years. And now, Sarah, is there anything you'd like to add other than you have worked really, really hard? And it looks, it sounds great. Super. Yeah, two thumbs up. 
Yeah, do, do not hesitate to correct me though, because no, everyone no. does. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm just excited. Well, <laughs> great, great work on Sarah's book. Thank you. Alan? I'm, I'm curious <clears throat> to understand how a certificate turns into or promotes a credit. You know, as we move through the process of becoming educated. Yeah, actually, that, I, I was ready for that question. Oh, thank you. Um, so every single one of these courses is also college credit um, and also is part of the public health um, AAOT. So what it, what it does is it sets the foundation and if they want to continue on to transfer, they can get the additional uh, classes such as like the lab and biology, the math, but it sets that foundation for public health and then they add in those classes and then they have that transfer. Program. So it stacks on top of each other. And then they want to get the certificate, they get a job with like a uh, county health department or yeah. what? A county health department, um, they can work at the Prime Central Oregon, they can work at um, COPA, um, which is uh, Central Oregon Pediatric Association, all the different um, at the home departments. But the key is, is that all of them need to have continuing education in order to advance in the, in the pathway. So the certificate will be kind of like a two for one deal in a sense that will stack them up for that transfer but also help them continue to get their continuing education units so they can maintain their certificate with the um, Oregon Health Authority. So they can, they can actually move up on their pay scale as they get more advanced degrees, right? So it, 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 it is like a win-win situation and they can maintain their continuing education units. Great. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Right. Any further questions? Not, I would entertain a motion. Okay. It resolved that Central Oregon Community College Board of Directors approves the new one year certificate of completion in community health effective fall 2023. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion yep. is moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That has been approved. The final item there is the budget committee members. And Bruce, can I ask a question before we talk about the specifics? Sure. So we advertised the, these positions, right? We did. Okay, yeah. I just couldn't remember. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So um, as you can see in the packet, uh, both Joe and I had an opportunity to sit in on um, some interviews. Joe, let me go first talking about Debbie Farr, and then I'll turn it over to you to talk about um, uh, Dustin, Dustin Saylor. And um, so Debbie Farr is, you know, wears many different hats. I thought in, ma in many respects so qualified, I actually she was interested in running for the board. For the board. Um, but, you know, it has a very strong uh, finance background, worked as a, for the county for many, many years, and then um, also is, is a former student, and she saw this as an opportunity to sort of to sort of give back. Um, met with Dr. Chesley and I, we were very, very impressed with her. She also has experience through being on the budget committee with Parks and Rec District. So this was a this was a no-brainer for us to very strongly endorse her. Joe, you want to tell us a little bit about uh, about Dustin? Uh, yes, uh, Dustin Saylor is uh, with the Water Springs Community Action Team, as well as uh, some other economic development uh, uh, projects down there over the last 15, possibly 20 years. I've known him for about that same amount of time. Um, he has a business background. He's had a couple of different businesses, and, and uh, he sold them, and, uh, which is good. Some people go out of business, but he didn't. Uh, he's been a driving force for the group. Of the for the Water Springs Community Action Team for, uh, for a long time. He's currently teaching uh, literacy, financial literacy for our uh, Madras Native Americans uh, out of Water Springs. Uh, he is aware of the time commitment and the uh, budget schedule for this year, and I uh, asked him to seriously uh, consider uh, re-upping his uh, interest once he gets to the 23-24 uh, budget process. 
Um, he is a uh, Native American, which is uh, I think is a compliment to him that uh, he's done all these things yeah. as well as uh, it would be good to have a representation from that area. Uh, they do benefit uh, as much as uh, all the rest of us do to our uh, Madras campus. Great, thank you. Any questions? At this point, I would entertain the motion. It's on the back of the page. Does someone online want to read it? I'm happy to, but Bill. You can go ahead. Okay. Be it resolved that the Board of Directors of Central Oregon Community College appoints Debbie Haar and Dustin Saylor to the COCC Budget Committee. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. I'll second it. Motion has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. I think there will be two really strong additions. Remind me, do we still have openings? Uh, we still have an opening in zone two. That's Laura Cooper's area out near Brandon. Okay. And we've re-advertised that. And I think we've reached out to Laura to see if she, she has some ideas. I'm working on it. Good. I appreciate that. Good. Yeah. So the next item is board member activities. I'm going to go ahead and start with people who are online. Oliver, are you willing to share what you've been up to since our last board meeting? I would if I had anything to report. <laughs> so Thank you. How about Jim? Uh, nothing really to report, except I would like to encourage anybody who might be listening who is in a position to do so and is interested to can strongly consider running and filing for a position on the COCC Board of Directors. I an anticipate there will be a number of openings and um, I think it's a great opportunity for people in the community who understand how valuable COCC is for the students and the community to uh, come forward and help with the policy guidance of the college by being on the board of directors. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that, that statement this evening. And Oliver, I also want to give you kudos. I don't know whether it's a <coughs> Facebook post or email change, but I saw that you had also uh, sort of put out that little blast and made yourself available for people that might want to learn more. So thank you. How about Laura? I have nothing to report. Okay. Joe? Uh, I met on um, February 22nd with the uh, real estate board in regards to the Madras expansion and uh, in regards to the uh, interview process and selection recommendation to the board uh, for Kirby Nagel House to be uh, the uh, CMG contractor. And I also had a great meeting today here at the chamber uh, with our new uh, foundation staff member, uh, Wendy Patton. Uh, very on, on top of her game, great uh, 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 pr promoter of COCC, even though she's only been with us for a couple weeks. But uh, that, that, that's a win for our uh, foundation. So I'm really glad to have met her and spent some time. Good great. job, Zach. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Alan? Um, all right. I have a I participated in the Oregon Community College Association Executive Board meeting and a regular board meeting and weekly legislative committee rooms too. Erica? I attended the um, OSU Cascades Advisory Board meeting on February 2nd, February meeting. Um, and we talked about the Cascades Edge Community and Industry Engagement program initiative um, where they're looking for career development opportunities for OSU Cascade students in the community. So, um, okay, anything we can borrow from that? Well, I think they're looking to borrow some things. So there's a lot of brainstorming and talking and um, yeah. So um, yeah, it was an interesting conversation and um, it, it helps the Central Oregon community if there are more opportunities and more connections. So. Good, thank you. On February 23rd, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Dr. Chesson and I had a chance to meet with Debbie Parr and sort of interviewed her as a potential budget committee member. Uh, on March 3rd, um, Joe and I uh, had a conversation with Lori, as we do on a regular basis on Friday. And then this morning, um, Dr. Chesson and I had an opportunity to meet with a potential 
candidate for a board position. So, um, back to Lori, uh, legislative update. Um, yeah, it's back to me. Um, and you don't um, have a lot more to share other than, uh, and I try to only bring the bills that are sort of imminent or of particular interest. Um, I would say that there was a hearing on the BSN in the Senate, um, it's Senate Bill 523. And by all reports, the community colleges and their supporters, um, and that includes uh, many hospital officials, many nurses, many members of the public, in addition to community college personnel, our arguments were better. And um, uh, I, I think that the folks at OCCA um, are feeling pretty, um, Hopeful. Um, you know, I, I hope they're right. They're closer to this action than I am, but I don't I don't know that I do feel as hopeful. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we'll be doing some additional lobbying and garnering support um, from our region for that as well. What what are the arguments against? <laughs> oh, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's just you wants to control nursing in the whole state, and they just push back against anybody who's, and who's getting in. Uh, I, I get that, but I guess my question is: there is there any shame, or I mean, I'm guessing they're more they're more diplomatic than calling it that way, or is is it is it that they say it's not needed, they're taking care of it, or are they worried that the, the quality would be? Up to That's top. just different. The, the, the diplomatic line that is being taken is the quality. It's a concern about quality okay. um, and an insistence that that quality can only be provided by a single institution. Okay. Very well. Thank you. Anything it. else? Nope. That's it. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll sorry, I'll add that there'll be a new voter voice campaign for the BSN specifically for the next week. And we'll make sure to circulate that to board members and to as wide that that's the big question. We're hoping that that gets them into the house for the second hearing. Great. Uh, next item on the agenda is looking ahead with some dates. Uh, tomorrow up in Redmond, our 25th anniversary toast at the Redmond Tech, Tech Center at 5.30. And then after that on Saturday, April 8th, Meal of the year. We're excited to have that back after a couple of years hiatus, and it's going to be a slightly different format this year, but should be a great time and way to mix it up. Good. Are we doing the uh, the what was the event that happened the night, night before? We're not doing taste the town. No, okay. not this year. We're going to reimagine taste the town and bring it back. Okay. On Tuesday, April 11th, uh, board real estate committee, and um, Wednesday, April 12th. Did I during this? Yeah, Wednesday, mm -hmm. April 12th, uh, the board of directors meeting. And then the following month on Wednesday, May 10th, we'll be meeting out in Pineville. And then Friday, May 19th, uh, again in Redmond, an anniversary coffee at the at the tech center. So I guess if it's coffee, that's gotta be 8 a.m. Yeah. You know, <laughs> cool. Okay. At this point, the COCC Board of Directors will now meet in executive session for the purpose of ORS 192.660, Section 1, Subsection I, Performance Evaluation of the CEO. Representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. All of the members of the audience are asked to leave the room. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general nature, general subject of the session as previously announced. At the end of the executive session, we will return to open session and welcome the audience back into the boardroom. Thank you.